Good morning. This is it. Believe in God. Our book talk today. Wow. Of course, it's in Korean. But Pastor Ko, Song Jun, I befriended him a couple of years ago. Wow, what a man of God. He got his PhD in mathematics at UC Berkeley. I mean, if you get PhD from UC Berkeley in physics or philosophy or math, Wow, I, I admire you. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> well, he's a man. And he wrote a book. But let's pray. Father, I dedicate this time as we go through this incredible book on believing God and how we need to just believe, Lord. From a mathematic professor, PhD. It's amazing, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Well, I came to America, back to America from Cambodia, October 23rd, and this book arrived at my doorstep from Korea, published by Gyujang, written by my friend, Pastor Ko Song Jun. Title is in English, Believe in God. Believe in God. What a, what a name. And the subtitle is, Believing in God is not to prove it, but to believe. What does he mean? I met him a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, I was part of the church that he was part of at Berkeley. And since I'm older than him, I started um, going to this church in 1980 and became the president of college department there and eventually became a very successful ministry that stayed at Berkeley and so he later joins the church and becomes a pastor through that ministry and so when he was a pastor in Suwon he invited me to come and preach at his church but he said oh he's just he, he is one of the up-and-coming preacher in Korea and his ministry several thousand people and so very successful so he invited me to preach at his church and as Hort we met and he said you know what I'm so busy we'll just have a quick lunch together and then then we'll talk later further more you know next meeting I said oh no problem we had meeting we just instantaneously in love you know what I mean it's like kindred spirit we spent three hours <laughs> and he said you know what you need to meet my friends too so he immediately organized uh, meetings the next time I was in Korea we end up meeting all his friends and all his friends became really good friends with me. And so I'm now ministering at a uh, joyful church, not only Suan Hana and also Agapao church or ministry. That's just amazing. In this book, he writes, when he was not a Christian, he had all these questions. He was very curious, George, and always wondering, always probing, always asking why, why, why? And that's why he got his PhD in mathematics at Berkeley. But he said, in mathematical world, there are two kinds of truth, propositional truth and axiomatic truth. Now, this is something that I've been saying over and over and over again. I and mean, if you ever heard me teach, you always hear me about axiomatic truth. X can be X and not X at the same time. That's something that we don't want to prove or cannot prove. We just need to accept, just like two plus three equals four. It's, it is not, it is a propos propositional truth, but it has become so common, it has become axiomatic truth. But anyways, he says that, well, there are two kinds of truth, and he's talking about axiomatic truth. He says that Bible does not make excuses or try to defend how God created the world. He said in book of Genesis 1, it simply states that God created heavens and the earth. And I just published my Genesis chapter, first part, Genesis chapter 1, an exact same quotation. I said, God does not need make excuses for us and does not have to explain why God created, right? We cannot prove God's existence, nor can we. But that doesn't mean we can. He doesn't exist. Just because you cannot prove something doesn't mean. So that's axiomatic truth. It's written in nine chapters. Whew, it's all good stuff. But I think chapter nine is something that, that blew my mind. And I think it's his way of critiquing the church of today's church, both Korean, Korea, both in Korea in America, saying that you shall not live like that. You cannot do church like that. 
and then he backlogs of how the kingdom of God should be, but it has become kingdom of man. 인간의 나라, 하나님의 나라, literally means human country, kingdom of God, kingdom of man and kingdom of God, how they should be different. Well, it's about ruling. When we talk about kingdom, it's who rules, right? And there are three kinds of need that humankind has, physical, spiritual, soul, body, soul, and spirit. So if you put that in the Venn diagram, basically God above and God supplies all our need and God's kingdom rules by love, right? But when human, then they start patronizing, they start ripping off people, they start taking advantage of other people. So in the kingdom of God, we should have God the above and all our needs are met, spiritual, physical, emotional. And yet, because there is that unfairness that set in, in society, uh, that some people die of hunger. Wow, this is tragic, isn't it? According to the David Barrett's research, we produce enough food. We have enough food that no one should die of hunger. And yet, guess how many people die of hunger each day? Okay. It's 22 million per year. That's 60,000 people per day. That's 2,511 people per hour. 42 people die per minute. Point, point 0.7 second, which means two people die every three seconds. One, two, three. Two people die, especially young kids under age five, our malnutrition. Why is that happening when the world has enough to feed everyone? According to David Barrett's research, the top 20% of the world population possess 86% of wealth and resource. America's worst, 1% of wealthy American possess 50% of American wealth. Wow. Toma, Thomas Piketty, he's the one who received uh, uh, one who received Nobel Prize on 21st century capitalism. He got his Nobel Prize proving that worldwide now, income earned by investment supersedes now income earned by manufacturing. So what he's saying is that more people are many, more, peop, more people are making more money on investing on Tesla stock than <laughs> manufacturer who makes the car. The laborer who works at the field does not make that much. It is the super wealthy who invested 100 million on Tesla now making billion. How fair is that? So although the world has produced enough, how come we are seeing that? And I, I can't believe he has a, a math, mathematic PhD, talks about French Revolution, 1789 through 1794. French Revolution happens. And, you know, every time I saw Lemis, I thought he was talking about French Revolution because, you know, story about French, France and revolution. Well, I was wrong. Lemis, and I watched that musical 17 times. So I thought, oh, I have authority in French Revolution. No, it was actually uh, the French Revolution happened 43 prior to Lemis revival, uh, the uh, revolution, which is called June Revolution. So I guess it, it, it took some half a century to adjust and whatever. And, but why did French Revolution succeed? Because they ran on two platforms. One was freedom and one was equality. And at the time, France, the quite well-to-do merchant realized, you know, I need freedom. I need to freedom to sell the stuff. And there was so much, in a way, the political system that was not setting, giving them freedom. 
So the middle class joined this revolution. And there is a lower class who just couldn't even eat. They were going, their children were dying of hunger. So they say, well, if we're gonna die, well, we'll just, let's see what we can do. So these two forces, freedom and equality. But these are principally two things actually are in contradiction. If you need freedom, if you want true freedom, well then it's free competition and equality is not something that you want naturally want, right? You want to win and have it all, no? Equality. But equality also, you need to give up on freedom a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm super rich. I could spend 10 million a day and I'll not run out. But what about 10 million people who die? Why don't you share? So why don't you pay 90% tax or something like that? It's no way. So freedom and equality, there's always in the tension. And yet French Revolution ran on that and became successful. And what spin off of that is the platform on freedom spin-off is capitalism. Platform on equality spin-off is communism. <sighs> wow. Well, capitalism believed there is God. Communism, there is. So communism, of course, failed. But capitalism also at the same time is not a biblical principle. You know, some people always try to think like capitalism is a biblical principle. Who, who, who told you that? Matter of fact, the American spirituality believed that so much. A friend of mine who got his PhD and wanted to work at one of the large American theological institute got the job and he offered and he needed to sign the document. And the document said, you cannot criticize capitalism. You cannot teach anything against capitalism. I'm like, what? How can you be a scholar if you cannot criticize? Being polemic is, is the role of a scholar. You need to debate. You need to be critical. You need to fight. He said, no. Well, I said, well, I cannot do that then. So he opted out. That is so sad, isn't it? So how do we distribute? Well, because the whole point is that in God's kingdom, when you really have not necessarily capitalistic or communistic where freedom and equality. No, it actually, it's not based on that. The principle of the uh, revolution was on not ripping off people, not uh, profiting from people. How do you not profit from people? If you're if you're a capitalist, wow, that's a huge order. So he argues at the end that truly you cannot be saved just by talking about faith, but you need to accept that Jesus is God. His argument, page two hundred twenty-nine. First of all, how do I get saved? To believe that Jesus is God. Number two, that Jesus is a savior. Number three, that Jesus will provide. He is Jehovah Jireh, one will provide everything. So we don't have to victimize others. It is love-based, right? Not profit-minded based. You don't go around telling people that, oh, he's, he has no nutrition value. He has no value for me. So I'm going to cut the relationship. No longer you're not a disciple of Christ. You just become a disciple of capitalism. True Christians do not say things like that or live like that, right? Wow. And he writes that in his life, that to twice God came and asked him to give all his life saving to people. And he did twice. And I thought, wow. Not only he, you know, he, lay, he in the book talks about his MBTI um, score was INTJ, INTJ scientist. And that's who I am. I am INTJ. And there's only 2% of population. And they are scientists. They are researcher. They're thinker. They're, they're, and, and as INTJ, he said that when God came and asked him to give up his life saving twice, it was very difficult for him. Because there was money saved up for 
insurance it just in case kid gets sick or you know whatever but he gave up life saving twice in his life and i'm thinking wow even that is equal because in my journey with christ he asked me to give up my life saving twice and i did it was not easy but wow you know <laughs> one time uh we had in, a, in my entire life saving us five thousand dollars and lord said give it take it all out and give it to your friend whose son had to quit school because he didn't have five thousand wow and of course you know twice things like that twice when i was like so poor <laughs> when that you know that five thousand man the world yeah but lord provides i believe jesus is god i believe he's my savior i believe god is my provider and i don't want to rip people off i don't want to make people into a source of income i don't want people uh, to look at people like piece of bread or you know i i want to trust that god will provide believe in god amen <laughs> oh what a book if you can read Korean, get that, read it. Uh, I don't think I'll translate that book into English anytime soon. So <laughs> trust me, it is a good book. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow. Mwah.